When it comes to legacies, uh, really only time's going to tell. Um, historians are probably going to be debating that for, for many years, maybe many decades. Um, I think that for many of the soldiers and also the journalists, it, it's the sort of micro legacies. Uh, often it was very hard to to tell whether you were having an impact, a big picture impact. For instance, I, I was actually talking to my fixer recently. Dalla Dam was a big uh, signature Canadian project. It's still not completely done, depending on who you talk to, uh, how effective it's been uh, is debatable. Polio vaccination, that's a bit, another big uh, signature Canadian project. That ceased in 2011. Um, you know, we were training the Afghan army, the Afghan National Police. Army's doing pretty good. The Afghan police have uh, a ways to go. When it comes to uh, governance, uh, there's still widespread corruption. Um, so there's a lot of things that only time will tell whether our efforts there um, are sustainable or, or lasting and if they've had a long-term effect on the country. But uh, for the journalists and soldiers and everyone who was there, they all have sort of their micro stories, um, the people they helped, the families they remember. Well, I mean, I think uh, like any legacy, I mean, as every year goes on, you know, stories will be will come come out and uh, I think it'll just get bigger and bigger. I think we've already made a humongous impact, not just for Canadians, but uh, through the world, like how they view us. Uh, we've always been a very adaptive um, forces and I think we just proved ourselves uh, again when we we're in Afghanistan and what we did over there was incredible. So. Um, you know, I'll always stand behind everything that we did, and um, I'm just, I was just very proud to be a soldier. So the legacy of the war in, in Canada, you know, that's yet to be written, I think. Um, right now, there's a bit of an issue with veterans' um, support from the government. Um, right before we went into real combat in 2006, they rewrote the Veterans Charter without asking us what we thought. Uh, all of us combat guys would have told them to, to, to stuff a lot of their ideas. <laughs> some of them are great. There are some really good changes that have happened, but a lot of them, uh, a lot of it leaves veterans uh, financially uncertain for their future. And uh, personally, as much as I enjoyed being a gunfighter and going into combat, I probably would have maybe changed my mind if I had known I wouldn't have been supported for life financially. Um, if I took the injuries I did take. Um, so the legacy might be now, like I've talked to lots of people that, uh, hang on, sorry, am I getting ahead of the question? Friends, Afghanistan is a different place. I mean, I'm one of the few who had the, the privilege of seeing Kabul in 2003, and then last time I was there was 2010. And even in those seven years, uh, the place changed dramatically. Uh, cities were rebuilt, roads and infrastructure were rebuilt, uh, most importantly schools reopened. Uh, and it's hard to convey to Canadians what a country with no education system or almost no education system looks like, but that was Afghanistan under the Taliban, that was 24 million people, illegal for girls to go to school. Now they are almost 40 percent of the school population, that school population is pushing 8 million students. So that's the real revolution. Uh, and Canada did lots of things to support that result, but we were the lead donor country on education. We were the lead donor country on rural development that helped the economy bounce back. We've done incredibly important things on agriculture, on health, as well as helping to train Afghan forces, uh, helping to prepare for three presidential elections, uh, and there will be a new president uh, next month, I guess sworn in in May of this year. Those are all enormous achievements, uh, potentially a watershed for Afghanistan, but conflict's not over. Uh, we have to be realistic about the challenges Afghans now take on in terms of their own security. Uh, we have to be realistic about uh, what we didn't achieve, which was to bring the Taliban based in Pakistan to heal. The, co the mission was never there. Pakistan is not on board with um, holding the Taliban to account. They op operate there with impunity. In fact, Pakistan is negotiating peace deals with the Taliban right now, despite paying a huge price in terms of its own security. So uh, there are big political issues 
as we look forward that still need to be addressed. The international community will remain involved. We have half a billion dollars on the table to make sure the security agencies continue to get forces continue to get funded in Afghanistan and for development to carry that legacy forward.